In this example, we want to show that the flux of a constant vector field through the entire sphere of radius A is zero. So this is for a sphere of, of any radius A and for a constant vector field where F is equal to any constant. Okay, so it doesn't matter what particular vector it is, it just matters that F gives the same vector no matter where it is um, in three space. Okay, and so there are certainly more elegant ways to, to prove this than uh, the method we're going to use. We're just going to sort of verify this directly. We're just actually going to compute um, this, this vector surface integral using a parameterization of the sphere and, and show that it equals to zero no matter what the coordinates v1, v2, and v3 are. So we'll use the parameterization that takes advantage of the spherical coordinates phi and theta. And so if it's a sphere of radius A, it's A times sine phi cosine theta, A sine phi sine theta, and then A cosine phi. All right, so this is just uh, the, the standard spherical coordinates in R3. Uh, and then we set basically rho equal to A, and, and that's, what we, that's what guarantees that we're on the surface of a sphere of radius A centered at the origin. Okay, and then it's straightforward to check. I mean, it's just a matter of, of doing the computation that when I do r sub phi cross r sub theta, that I get a squared sine phi times r itself. Okay, so I get this vector multiplied by a squared sine phi. And so, part, I mean, the fact that this normal vector is some multiple of r is something that we probably already know intuitively about the sphere which is that the the normal vector to the surface of the sphere is in the same direction as the vector that points to the point on the sphere in which we're we're at okay so so the fact that we get some multiple of r is obvious and then basically the the multiple we get is is basically the jacobian of the coordinate transformation for spherical coordinates on the other hand, f of r of phi theta is equal to what? Well, f of r is equal to this constant vector v, you know, so say this is v, no matter what point we're at. So if I'm at any point, I get the same vector v. So in the end, I just get v right here, which if I write in coordinates, is v1, v2, and v3. Okay, so these are all constants. All right, so we've computed this normal vector field, and we've uh, sort of trivially plugged in the the parameterization in, into the given vector field. So we're actually ready to rewrite our vector surface integral as a double integral. So the way we do this, of course, what's d? D is the the bounds of the parameterization. So the the phi bounds are zero to pi and the theta bounds are 0 to 2 pi. So we get 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi. And then now we have to take the dot product of this vector with this vector. So I'm going to get a cubed and times, so v1 times and then a cubed and then sine squared phi and then times cosine theta. And then I get V2 times, and then A cubed sine squared phi times sine theta. And then the last term is V3 times A cubed, and then sine phi cosine phi. d phi d theta. Okay, so I basically our, our method to show uh, that this entire integral is zero is essentially to split it up into three separate integrals using you know these three terms we have right here and show that each uh, individual integral is equal to zero. So if I, if I look at the first term, I have a product of functions of phi and theta. So I'm going to get 
v1 a cubed and then the integral 0 to pi of sine squared phi d phi and then times the integral 0 to 2 pi of cosine theta d theta and then plus and the second term is v2 a cubed and then again I get the integral 0 to pi of sine squared phi d phi and then times now the integral 0 to 2 pi of sine theta d theta and then plus v3 a cubed and then now I get there's really there's no non-constant theta terms here so I'm just gonna get a 2 pi from the the theta integration and then I get the integral 0 to 2 pi and then sine phi cosine phi is sine of 2 phi over 2 okay just using a standard trig identity alright so now we'll just look at each one of these integrals separately so the idea is that the integral of cosine theta from 0 to 2 pi is 0 and so is the integral of sine theta from 0 to 2 pi so so that means that this first term and the second term are both equal to 0 now the third term again I have the integral of, of sine now it's of 2 phi but that just makes the period um, equal to half of 2 pi which is pi and so I'm still integrating over uh, a multiple of the period of the function and so that again is going to force this to be 0 and so this third term is 0 and so in fact the entire this entire double integral is equal to 0 and therefore we conclude that the the flux of this constant vector field uh, through the surface of the sphere is equal to zero and we just verified it directly using our, our standard parameterization of the sphere and uh, our parameterization of the vector field which is just to pick constants you know that that represent this vector now if I think about this so I have this vector n and so the, the reason why this is zero is because whatever the flux is through the vector field at this point, if I look at the antipode, which is the point exactly opposite on the sphere from where, from where I started, then the normal vector here, this is going to be negative n, whatever, whatever this is. But yet I still have the same vector v right here. So the function I integrate is f dot n ds so the function I integrate is f dot n and so here I get positive v dot product with positive n and here I get positive v dot product with negative n and this equals negative of v dot n and so we can see that for every point on the sphere there's a point opposite it where my function takes on the opposite value okay and so because of the symmetry of the sphere that guarantees as I as I integrate over the entire sphere that I'm gonna get zero or another way to say it is if I broke up in the sphere into two hemispheres the flux through one hemisphere is gonna be exactly opposite the flux through the other hemisphere and so they cancel out so in this case you know my, my vector field is, is, is flowing in, the, in this direction and so the flow into the sphere here is going to exactly cancel out with the flow out of the sphere on, on the opposite end and, and so the entire flux is equal to zero so there's these, these geometric there's some more elegant arguments to use but in this case just to practice computing um, s vector surface integrals we, we just computed directly and showed that for any choice of v1 v2 and v3 and any choice of a it didn't really matter that all of these integrals went to zero and so in the end the flux was equal to zero